Starting off with our top focus in this edition, South Korea is going for the kill, quite literally. According to reports coming in, a day after North Korea's latest provocation, its sixth and by far most powerful nuclear test, the South Korean Defense Minister Song Yong mo told lawmakers in Seoul that a special forces brigade described as a decapitation unit would be established by the end of the year. The assassination unit called Spartan 3000 would be ready by the end of this year. Let's take a closer look at what this brigade is all about. Spartan 3000 is South Korea's assassination unit. It is a brigade-sized unit of 2,000 to 4,000 soldiers ready for deployment at the end of this year. It is essentially formed to target North's leadership, also trained to neutralize Kim Jong-un and preempt attack on South Korea as also to thwart Kim Jong-un's nuclear ambitions. Now, the last time South Korea is known to have plotted to assassinate the North Korean leadership, nothing went as planned. In the late 1960s, after North Korean commandos tried to ransack the presidential palace in Seoul, South Korea's secretly trained men plucked from prisons or, or, or off the streets to sneak into North Korea and slit the throat of its leader, Kim Il-sung. When the mission was aborted, the men rose up in revolt. They killed their trainers and fought their way into Seoul before blowing themselves up. An episode the government concealed for decades. South Korea is at it again as Kim's grandson, Kim Jong-un, accelerates his nuclear missile program. South Korea has now introduced three arms build-up programs. Kill Chain, the Korea Air and Missile Defense Program and the Korea Massive Punishment and Retaliation Initiative, which includes the decapitation unit. Under the Kill Chain program, South Korea aims to detect impending missile attacks from North Korea and launch preemptive strikes. Stage 2 revolves around intercepting incoming missiles from the North. And lastly, the third stage involves surgical strikes and special forces operations against North Korean leadership and critical assets. It is here that the assassination unit would play a key role in the last stage of South Korea's survival plan. Rarely does a government announce a strategy to assassinate a head of state, but South Korea wants to keep the North on the edge and nervous about the consequences of further developing its nuclear arsenal. At the same time, the South's increasingly aggressive posture is meant to help push North Korea into accepting President Moon Jae-in's offer of talks. Although a majority of South Koreans, especially conservative politicians and commentators, call for arming their country with nuclear weapons of its own, Moon has repeatedly vowed to rid the Korean Peninsula of such weapons. Let's go straight across to our special guest joining us on the broadcast. For more on this, Andrea Brahmian is a strategic expert joining us from South Korea. Good evening, sir. Very uh, appreciate you joining us here on Weon. First up, uh, it's not the first time, but South Korea has planned to assassinate Kim Jong-un. How different are things this time around? Uh, well, it's the first time they've they've come out and said that there's a plan like this for the current North Korean leader. As you, as you pointed out, uh, a long time ago uh, in response to an assassination attempt on South Korea's leader Park Chung-hee in 1968, they did develop an elite team that was supposed to go in and, and make an attempt on Kim Il-sung's life in, in revenge and that never ended up happening. I would commend to your readers the South Korean, or your viewers rather, the South Korean film called Shilmido which uh, chronicles those events. Um, now, basically, South Korea is trying to send a message to the North that if this current crisis escalates into conflict, they have plans in place to severely punish the decision makers in Pyongyang. And that's why they've made this announcement publicly. All right. Uh, also, you know, the kind of reaction that we've been getting in uh, from South Korea so far after North Korea's latest uh, nuclear test, do you anticipate that that's only a mechanism by South Korea to build up pressure on Kim Jong-un and uh, in order to indulge in a psychological warfare? But in terms of this team being built up, is South Korea then taking things to the next level? Uh, it's, I don't know if it's escalatory as much as it's saying that there will be consequences for the leadership directly. Uh, from South Korea's perspective, 
in the United States perspective, North Korea has been driving strategic change on the Korean Peninsula. They've been challenging the status quo by developing these nuclear weapons. And so introducing the FAD anti-missile battery, which uh, the South Korean government allowed to be fully completed this month and making statements like this is an attempt also to, to shift the strategic balance a little bit back towards uh, South Korea and the United States favor. It may also be messaging to the Trump administration also. Uh, there are lots of rumors that Donald Trump personally thinks Moon Jae-in, the president of South Korea, is a weak leader. And this demonstrates or at least indicates uh, a toughness that I think perhaps uh, President Donald Trump will respond to as well. Is it also an attempt to help push North Korea into accepting President Moon Jae-in's offer of talks? I, I don't think so. And I think since Moon Jae-in took office, things have gone so badly with the nuclear crisis that nobody on either side realistically expects anything to come of this. Uh, I, think, I think instead, clearly, it's about messaging that uh, on our side, we are tough. We have solved. We can make steps. Make steps. All right, we'll just run reconnect uh, with Andre there. But as he was suggesting, uh, things have reached a tipping point, escalating after uh, Moon Jae-in has taken over. Remember, initially there was an offer of talks that came in uh, from uh, uh, the South Korean leader. Uh, but after things have taken uh, an ugly turn as North Korea escalates its uh, nuclear and missile program, and in the latest, as it has tested its sixth and so far its biggest nuclear test, Things seem to have uh, gone out of control and South Korea has now, according to reports and according to a statement released, uh, formed a squad which is trained to eliminate the North Korean leader. Andre, coming back to you, what prompted South Korea to go for the kill? Uh, well, let's be clear, they're, they're, they haven't gone for the kill. They've rhetorically amped up the, what they're saying about what would happen in, in, in a war. They also haven't said that they're going to send this team in for the next nuclear test either. It's important to realize that they're just saying, if war breaks out, we are going for you. We are tough. As tough as the rhetoric is on your side, we also know how to dish it out as well. But is this a reality on ground What's that there is here? a team that is being prepared uh, that if there is a need and if the need arises in all eventuality, then this team would then be trained to also eliminate the leader. All right, a bit of an audio problem there with our guest there, Andre. We'll just try and reconnect with him. But as he was pointing out, this is more of a rhetorical stand that the South Korean leadership has taken time and again, but also upping the ante and escalating things uh, to another level now has indicated that there will be this Kill Kim squad that will be formed uh, by South Korea. This is going to be a 2,000 to 4,000 strong brigade, which will in all eventuality be prepared to go for the kill to eliminate the North Korean leadership. No, certainly not the first time that it uh, has uh, planned to eliminate the leader, but definitely the first time it has come out in the open to indicate the same. Andre, we lost you there for a bit, but as you were suggesting, this could perhaps just be a rhetorical stand that the South Korean leadership is taking. But what I want to ask you this is, uh, is the team a reality? Is this court actually being prepared to eliminate Kim Jong-un or is that just a rhetorical statement? I suspect if they've come out and said it, that it, it will be a reality. Uh, maybe it'll be an agglomeration of, of commando and special forces squads that they have already. Perhaps uh, they'll train in a slightly different way, but likely it'll be drawn from resources they, they already have. Um, perhaps, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Perhaps in six months or eight months, we, they'll, they'll release some video footage if they feel they also need to be piling on the pressure on, on Kim Jong-un as well. Um, as it is, though, at this point, it is, it is a rhetorical device um, more than it is about an actual conflict nearing because of because of this new plan.
Is there a fear within the South Korean leadership that the United States will not follow through with the kind of promises that it has been making in order to counter North Korea? Um, in, I'm not sure... I'm not sure quite what you mean by that question. I think, if anything, there's there's more worry in South Korea right now that the United States could accidentally uh, blunder into a war with strategic miscalculation. Clearly, um, South Koreans worry that if war breaks out, they will pay the highest price. And so it's in their best interest to, to maintain the deterrence posture, make sure that it, things don't get out of hand. And clearly right now with today's statement, they've judged that maintaining that balance uh, requires some tougher talk. All right, Andre, uh, before we let you go, one uh, last response from you on uh, to what extent do you think that by the end of the year, uh, are you hopeful that things uh, uh, look on a brighter side in terms of at least the fact that this team is not required to actually go into North Korea? Um, Again, I, I don't imagine this team will ever go into North Korea. The, the message really is if war breaks out, then we have a, a team that will go after the top leadership. Um, so really for, for them to go in means war has broken out uh, or, is, or is about to. So I sincerely hope that we don't reach that point by the end of the year. Um, this crisis is continuing to build. I believe North Korea has a couple more tests that they would like to do before they, they stop their testing program. Um, and there's also a little more room in the sanctions regime um, for the U.S. and the U.N. Security Council. Uh, so I do think things are going to get a little bit worse, but then hopefully that leads to a point where the sides can come together and begin talking. If I can just squeeze in another question there, Andre, before we let you go. Uh, you know, this is indeed a difficult balancing act that South Korea is uh, uh, trying uh, to sign up for. But how can a nation without nuclear power actually try to deter a nation with nuclear power? Well, the idea is, is that South Korea is supposed to be able to rely on the nuclear umbrella of the, of the United States. They're in a military alliance. They're both pledged to come to one another's aid if, if one or the other is attacked. So, so that's the plan. Um, obviously, South Koreans and other Asian allies have been a little more nervous recently under Trump's All right, request rhetoric. you just hold that thought there.